Right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, first of all, I'm going to go over this gentleman's video here, and I think you're going to find it very interesting what he has to say. And then at the end, I'm going to address uh, this comment from uh, Last Day Worshippers. All right, he says, uh, read the Word of God properly, dear. All right, another man calling me dear, that's okay. Uh that's on him. I'm not going to be calling him dear, dear. But anyways, uh, listen up. Eternal state is what they teach. Well, uh, that's that's in a nutshell what they are, what they believe, what they teach. Now I'm going to tell you what uh, what I would respond to them about why that's incorrect. And I, I will say this: a lot of these folks that believe these things, they're, they're nice folks and everything. I don't mean to talk bad about them or anything like that. And some of them may be, you know, some of them may even be on here, but uh, we, we just have to understand that, uh, you know, despite my feelings towards these fe people, we need to stand upon the word of God and we need to rightly divide the word of truth. And if they're not rightly dividing the word of truth, we need to call it out and we need to say, no, that's wrong. This is what's right. This is why you're wrong about this. So I'm trying to do this in a way I'm not being, I don't want to be unkind about it to folks that believe this, but I'm going to show why this view is wrong and why the pre-tribulation rapture and the, uh, the pre-millennial return of Christ, all of that is the correct view and the biblical view. That's, that's really the important thing is what does the Bible say? It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. We just have to go by what the Bible says. Uh, by the way, Matt N. joined us. Welcome, Matt. I uh, <coughs> saw you there. Drifting. And I see you guys are talking about the uh, the Browns. Uh, yeah, they, I think they have a new CD that's probably Drifting. what you guys are talking about. And uh, so, yeah, I Drifting. encourage you to support them. In fact, at the end of the broadcast tonight, uh, Drifting. The, the song I have picked out for us to finish with is actually the Browns. Drifting. So we'll be finishing up with the Browns tonight. And we're looking forward to seeing them real soon. Uh, they, uh, We're about to have our Jubilee in October, and they always come out for Jubilee, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, I love those folks. Uh, uh, Brother Brown is a good friend of mine, so amen. All righty, let's go on. Uh, we'll talk about all, all the issues that I have with the pre-millennial, or excuse me, with the amillennial and the post-millennial views. So, uh, first of all, they said that the millennium is the entire church age. Well, the uh, the church age, <laughs> Bruce asking, is, is it the Cleveland Browns? I don't think they live in Cleveland. Drifting. <laughs> Drifting. But it's the Brown family, of course. All right, so Revelation chapter 20 is where I'm going to go to. And so, Rev, there we go, Revelation 20, and I want verse number 4. So, they, they say that the millennium is actually the entire church age, but this is what it says in Revelation 20, verse 4. It says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had he received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All right, a couple of things on these verses now. This is this is kind of problematic for the post or the uh, uh, millennial view, is because these individuals are individuals during the tribulation period that have not worshipped the beast. Oh. Or his image. Hold on a second now. Hold on. See, this is not honest. You're not being honest at all. When you categorize this as a tribulation period, because that's not what the text says. All right. This idea of a seven year tribulation does not exist in the Bible anywhere at all. In fact, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever I hear somebody say this, uh, anything about a tribulation period, it's, it's not a guarantee that they're wrong, but it's a red flag. And specifically, when they say seven-year tribulation, because I know that they are attributing, attributing it to Daniel chapter 9, which is the fulfillment of uh, 
Jesus, when he laid down his life, he fulfilled Daniel chapter 9, the 70th week. Okay? When he laid down his life, that was the fulfillment of the 70 weeks. All right? And then, so, what happens is when people make this claim of a, the seventh week, or I'm sorry, the 70th week being the seven-year tri um, uh, tribulation, right? They're dismissing everything that Jesus has done. All right? Let me walk, let me try to do this real quick. The angel comes to Daniel and says, Consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Now, Jesus did that when he laid down his life. Right? And at the end of it is when he confirmed it, when he laid down his life. He is the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And it says here, even until the consummation, which is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we are transformed into our glorified body. Nothing in here supports this idea of seven-year tribulation. What they want to say is that the Antichrist is the Messiah, that the Antichrist will, in the future, make an end of sacrifice. And, or he will cause the sacrifice to oblation to cease. And there will be a seven-year tribulation and the Hollywood movie stuff. All right? It's not supported by the scripture at all. But if you press them on it, all you, well, that's all you have to do is say, hey, is that the Antichrist? And of course, if they say, yeah, that's the Antichrist, then they're essentially saying that the Messiah is the Antichrist. Or that the Antichrist is the Messiah. No, either way. It, it's incredible ignorance. It's a lack of understanding and it's because they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands, but rather they believe what Reverend Smitty says. ...neither received his mark on their hands or foreheads. Uh, they, they were those who were beheaded, so they're martyred during the tribulation period. Um, but then it refers to them... Again, there is no tribulation period. Period. ...as living and reigning with Christ for the thousand years, for the millennium. Now, if they teach that the millennium is actually the uh, the current age in which they live in, we live in, then these people were beheaded at the beginning of the church age, and now they should be ruling and reigning with Christ, uh, as in, I guess, here on earth. Or no, uh, <laughs> this is this is purposely trying to not understand. If you had read verse 5, the dead live not again till after the thousand years. Alright, so if you're going to believe him, it would, he's purposely trying to not understand. He wants to say that people with no heads should be ruling and reigning right now. That's not what the scripture says. Uh, he's trying to push a zombie doctrine of headless zombies reigning and ruling with Christ. That's not what the scripture says. Or maybe from heaven is what they're trying to say, but, but anyway... No. See, this is not complicated. And I saw thrones... That's what we sit on. Okay? That's what we sit on. We sit on heavenly thrones. Right now. Alright, let's go two places real quickly. Real quickly. Don't go anywhere. Check this out. Alright? And uh, where are we at here? And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Okay? We sit on thrones right now. Because we are kings and priests unto God right now. Right now. He has made us kings and priests 
right now. We sit on he we sit in heavenly places. We sit on heavenly thrones. And the judgment has been given to us. Okay? Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? We are born of God. Remember John chapter 3. <clears throat> That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. John chapter 11. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 3 verse uh, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, let's go to John 3, verse 36. And he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Right now, we have everlasting life. The judgment has already been given to us. We have passed from death unto life, and we are sealed unto the day of redemption. All right, it's already been determined. That, that'll never change. So the judgment has already been given to us that are born... Of the Spirit of God. Right, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God. All right. And they, the all of us that are witnesses, all of us that are witnesses and for the for Jesus and for the Word of God, all of us, all of us that are saved. All right. Now, just as getting your head cut off is not a means of salvation, so also not worshiping the beast is not a means of salvation. All right. This is a vision being shown to John by the angel sent by Jesus. All right. And what's important to understand here is that they refers to the saved, the living who are saved. They lived, they lived. That, maybe I should highlight that word too, they lived, All right? Because they're not dead, they don't, they're not headless zombies, right? They lived. They lived. Can, that doesn't mean they are living forever in this period. It just means those that are alive. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The, the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. That means the resurrection occurs after the thousand years. There is no resurrection before the thousand years. Notice a resurrection anywhere here? No, because there is no resurrection. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. That's not a resurrection. Why do you think that? Well, it's, that's part of my zombie doctrine. You have, you have to believe, right? I mean, you have to imagine that there's a res resurrection here. There's not. There is no resurrection before the thousand years. You're not seeing it anywhere, anywhere at all. The only resurrection at the beginning of the thousand years is the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he says, I am the resurrection. Jesus is the first resurrection, the first begotten of the dead, the first fruits of them that slept. We that are his sheep He's, the Lord is our shepherd. We that are his sheep, 
we will follow him and when he returns he will gather us to be with him in the air it, it, it's uh, it cannot be taken literally at all uh, but they're, they're thrones they're, they must be in heaven ruling with Jesus Christ from heaven but how did well they must be in heaven <laughs> Ephesians 2 he points to it and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus now he's he knows this Hey, so he's got no excuse. He knows it. He just doesn't believe it. How do they rule? They don't do anything. Uh, the Lord, how do they? How uh, do they have... rule? How do they 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 rule? Rule. You don't see rule in Revelation twenty at all. He's just a doggone liar. And a deceiver. He doesn't know the truth at all. It's what they're trying to say, but but anyway, it, it's uh, it cannot be taken literally. Uh, but they're they're thrown. They must be in heaven, ruling with Jesus Christ from heaven. But how do they rule? They don't how do they rule? Uh, the Lord how do they rule? with Jesus Christ from heaven. But how do they rule? They don't do it. How, how, how do they rule? How do they rule? They can't rule. How do they rule? Thrones, they must be in heaven, ruling with Jesus Christ from heaven. But how do they rule? They don't do anything. Uh, the long, uh, we don't have uh, departed loved ones and, and these these uh, people who had uh, uh, you know been beheaded for their faith in Christ coming down to the earth and you know saying, "Hey, you guys can't do that," and you know correcting sin and doing stuff, helping them to. Good God Almighty. How do people get this stupid? Well, it's real simple. Rather than trusting the Word of God, as it plainly says for all to see, there's nothing hidden here. All right, it's only hidden to those that don't believe. If you can't see it, it's because you don't believe. It's that simple. There's a veil upon your heart. I mean, it's incredible. It really is. But this guy, he's got the support of 99.9% .9 of all the preachers in the world. It's, it's amazing. The problem is, they're all wrong. <laughs> yeah, I just wonder if people even care about the truth anymore. This is it's a crazy world we live in. All right. Um, before, now I've had enough of this guy. I was going to show more, but I can't take it, man. Yeah, it would be all nice, and then I'm going to be as dumb as dog do. He's going to be nice, but he's going to be dumb as dog do, and he's going to lie. And he's going to deceive. There is no mention of the word rule in Revelation 20 at all. All right, so you're a liar. If you can't admit that to yourself, you're lying to yourself. Period. Let me walk, this is so simple, it's amazing. Let me walk you through this. It's only 15 verses. And get to 11 verses, and you, if you understand after 11, you, you'll, you'll never un understand it. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having a key of the bottle was put <clears throat> in a great chain in his hand now this is another vision as we read in revelation chapter one the revelation of jesus christ here before i butcher the verse let's get it all right let's get it now you should have read this really before you get the Reading Revelation 20, you ought to read Revelation 1. It takes five minutes to read the chapter. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things, visions, which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, this is very important. Jesus sends his angels 
sends his angels to John to show visions or things which must shortly come to pass. All right, that's that's extremely important to understand. It's the very first verse. If you don't get it, then you shouldn't continue on to the next verse. You really shouldn't figure this one out first. Okay? And then, if you figure that one out, and you get to Revelation 20, and you see, and I, John, saw an angel sent by Jesus to show us things which must shortly come to pass. This is another vision. An, and he shows us a lot of visions of the same thing from different angles, different perspectives. But they're all consistent. There, there's no contradiction in the Word of God. This is from God. Right? And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottom putting a great chain on his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years all right so now let's let's get into I'll spare you uh, uh, showing hit this guy talk but he, he points out to uh, John 12 uh, where it says um, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Okay, so the Lord Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And he has bound the strong man, which is the prince of this world. And now he's made available the kingdom of God to whosoever believes in him. See, if you understand, in the Old Testament, there was one country, one nation of God, one kingdom of, you know, the kingdom of God was within that one nation. Well, Jesus has come and torn down that wall and made available to whosoever believes in him, the kingdom of God. Now, and that's very important, very important to understand. It really is. It's so simple. It's amazing. Remember, Jesus says, to the Jews, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. That nation is those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the past, the kingdom of God was within that one nation. All right, Outside of that nation were the nations deceived. Satan had a hold of those nations, but not within the nation of God, where the kingdom of God was. All right, it's pretty simple. So now here comes Jesus, and he binds the strong man, and now he's spoiling the house, which is the earth. All right, and oh, I was going to make a point about how he lied about that too. Doesn't have any understanding, but doesn't matter. John chapter sixteen. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. All right, so he's bound and then he's going to be destroyed. All right, if you, maybe one way you can quote it to, uh, you know, uh, somebody thrown in death row and then uh, then executed. All right, that, that's one way to look at it. Okay, so the issue here, I know a lot of people get hung up on this, so let me address it now. A lot of people get hung up on this idea. Well, how can you say Satan is sealed up and not deceiving the nations no more? This guy repeatedly says, well, I go outside and I look and I don't see Satan being bound up. Well, uh, first of all, does it say what it is that you're referring to or does it say nations because that's really the key if you don't understand that then there's something wrong with your heart <laughs> you're you're trying to apply this to your neighbor right your brother your sister everybody else but yourself 
that's problem number one. Uh, you shouldn't be saying, well, when I go out and look, and I'm probably guilty of this too, when I go out and look, I don't see Satan being bound. I see all kinds of people, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, bad stuff, right? Well, the bad stuff starts in the human heart, and the, really the bad stuff starts with with ourselves, okay? This is not talking about putting an end to sin in a thousand years of peace. Uh, it doesn't say that at all. And I don't know how you say, well, people are getting their heads cut off, but that's peace. Uh, people worshiping the beast during this period, and that's a period of peace. That's not what it says at all. I think you watch too many Hollywood movies. Because you really have to willingly ignore the written scripture in order to believe that. It's amazing. This is talking about the nations. All right, so outside of the nation of God, where the nations deceived. Now here comes Jesus. He binds the strong man that Satan should no longer deceive the nations of people, not the individuals, but the groups. Big difference. Big difference. Now, what is the purpose of deceiving the nations. All right, let's go to verse 8 and shall go out to deceive the nations. So Satan is let loose. Why? To go out to deceive the nations, to gather them together. Now, if you can understand that, man, you ought to be you, you ought to be able to, to get it, really. Because when this happens, we are up in the air. See, imagine in the Old Testament, just for a moment, you got one group, one country, one nation of God, and it, within that nation is the king of God. Outside of that nation, like it was in the Old Testament, it was not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was only within the nation of God, the children of Israel. All right. Now let's say, just hypothetically, God lifts that nation up out of the earth. That means the only nations that are on the earth are deceived by Satan. No? That means all the nations of the earth are not of God so that's what that means so when it says shall go out to deceive that's an action right that's an action being taken and that action is to gather to gather that's the action the action of deceive is to gather so, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up out of this earth. And then Satan is let to deceive, to gather. It's the same thing. To gather, to deceive. Both are actions equal, one to the other. Right? So, they are brought to our feet all right just as we read in genesis 3 verse 15 the lord said unto the serpent i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. 
right? So, where's the Lord? Up in the air. And he stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. This is prophesied all throughout the Bible, consistently. Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Acts chapter 2, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Revelation 3 verse 9, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Right? 1 Corinthians 15, He must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Alright, so when fire comes down from God, where are we? Well, we that are saved are up in the air. If you have yourself on the earth at this moment in time, you're by your own words, by your own thoughts, you're not saved. God isn't condemning you. You have condemned yourself. Because you don't believe in the Word of God. And Jesus is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. All right, so this is crystal clear. It's so simple. It's unbelievable how simple it is. And yet these people can't see it. Uh, they shall be priests of God and of Christ. First Peter chapter 2, ye are a royal kingdom. Uh, I'm sorry, a royal priesthood and holy nation. Yeah, better. Let me get it. Let me get it here because I just butchered it. So, First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people. Talking about Christians. Talking about the elect. Talking about those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. A peculiar people. We can draw a parallel to Exodus 19, starting at verse 5, where it says, Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. We Christians are the children of Israel. It couldn't be clear. All right. So, uh, Revelation 20. When Satan is loose to gather or to deceive and to gather the nations, that's all, all the unsaved people. Because so we're, we're not on the earth at this moment in time. I mean, there's so many examples to give. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. I mean, 2 Peter chapter 3. And so on and so forth. I mean, it's everywhere. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. We are not on the earth when this happens, when fire comes down from God out of heaven. We really got no excuse. So when the unsaved compass the camp of the saints about, where are the saints? Up in the air. All right, first Thessalonians 4, first the dead in Christ and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we read the same thing in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when it says Jesus sends his angels to gather together the elect and in Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. The harvest is the end of the world. At the harvest is when the wheat, which is the saved, are gathered into the barn, which is above. And the tares are put in bundles and burned, which is below. The Bible is consistent. It's over and 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 over. And, over. and Isaiah and Joel... Matthew, Mark, Luke, in 2 Peter chapter 3, and here in Revelation 20. Remember those verses in, in Isaiah, Joel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. 
where it says, The sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. In verse 11, Revelation 20, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. This is the sun being darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is the transformation of the end of the world into the new world at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. This doesn't happen 20 some times. This is a one time end of the world, one time deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's why it's called the great day of the Lord, or the, the great and terrible day of the Lord. There's a really good description of it. Because it's great for us, and it's very terrible for those that are not saved. Honest to God, how do you claim to be an expert on the Bible and not know these things. All right, so I've, uh, all right, and then of course, uh, Revelation, the you know from there, um, it's the judgment of God, right? This that's all that is from twelve to fifteen. Further expansion on the judgment of God, and the second death. Remember what we read in. John chapter 11, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? The second death has no power over us. Right? The second death has no power over us. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with Christ a thousand years. All right. So right now, we that are saved reign with Jesus Christ. He's in us, and we are in Him. We are one with the Lord God Almighty. All right. All right. So, I feel like I, I always talk too much. But I want to go over this real quickly. Read the word. This uh, last day worshipers, he says, read the word of God properly, dear. Ours is also called the first resurrection. No, it's not. It's never, not a single time. That's just a straight up lie. Gee whiz, man. These guys, they lie. And people, <laughs> I don't know how they are so easily deceived. Uh, you notice first resurrection is only mentioned in Revelation 20, verse 5 and verse 6. First resurrection now. If you would have read John chapter 11, you would have, you should have known Jesus is the resurrection. All right, you should have known that. Jesus even says himself, I am the resurrection. Right? Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. Revelation 1. Oh, my goodness. Who would have known? Heck. Who could have known that? Revelation 1. The first chapter says Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. And you can't figure out who the first resurrection is? Wow, man, you must be some kind of stupid. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's see if I can... It changed. Did you see that? It changed it on me. 1 Corinthians 15. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits? Of them that slept. Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. He's the first fruits of them that slept. He is the first resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection. He's our shepherd. We are the sheep. We will follow him. He has promised that he will come back for us. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Right? So we follow him. He has come into our flesh 
and he has laid down his life. He has done the works of God necessary for eternal life. He has went into the grave, and he has come up out of the grave, and he has transformed into a perfect flesh, an incorruptible, immortal flesh, and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us and gather us unto him in the air. And all the unsaved will be gathered at our feet, and fire will come down from God out of heaven and, and destroy them, devour them. All the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You know that this world was destroyed by water in the days of Noah. Then so also should you know this world will be destroyed by fire when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. I mean, this is not a, this is, it's overwhelming. This is not a one-time verse where I'm trying to manipulate your brain. This is overwhelming evidence all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis 3, verse 15, The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This prophecy is taught all throughout the Bible consistently. Never wavers. Men waver, but not the word of God. All right, the, he, this, uh, whoever this deceiver is, he says the above portion of Scripture is telling us that we are going to share in the first resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you're right. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. No, but you're going to twist this and change it. Make it say the opposite, aren't you? Well, let's find out. It is certainly referring to God's children as partakers of the first resurrection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you... Boy, you really uh, got me going now. Notice words like those and who share. Well, you know, it's in the sharing there, but whatever it knows. All right, no man ever. In the first resurrection. Bless, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. Right. Isn't that what it says? Yeah. But they shall be priests of God, and of Christ shall reign with him a thousand years. Yeah. Yeah, well, wait, you get some goofy words there, but whatever, okay. And in the first row, it's plural, referring to us, and not to our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? But then now you're going to turn this around and say the opposite, aren't you? You're going to say one thing and then flip it around and say the other thing. That way all your bases are covered. I already know. Secondly, you are denying that there is going to be yet another resurrection of the wicked after 1,000 years of us being risen. And yet it is right there in your Bible. Do not take my word for it. Read it yourself. Revelation 20 verse 5. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the 1,000 years were in. That's, that's not what my Bible says. <laughs> But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. All right. Maybe I'll forget what you said up here. Okay. Why did the rest of the dead remain dead? Did not come to life until after the thousand years of the reign of Christ. Whoa, 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 whoa. what? It never says Jesus reigns. There never, it never says the reign of Christ. It never says it. Let's see. What did you say? I can't remember what you said. Up here. I don't remember. What, two seconds ago? Is it because of all that, uh, you know, fluoride? Is that what it is? You, you can't remember what you just wrote up here. The above portion of Scripture is telling us that we are going to share in the first resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a certain... It is certainly referring to God's children as partakers of the first resurrection. Notice words like those and share. 
in the first resurrection. It's plural, referring to us and not to our Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, brain dead, brain shuts off, brain cells don't work anymore. Now, you get down here and did not come to life until after 1,000 years of the reign of Christ. Notice, it's referring to us, not to our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, all of a sudden, this is 1,000 years of the reign of Christ. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't know how in the world people get this stupid. Honest to God. Honest to God. How, you can't think two seconds, man? It's the same vein of thought. And you can't rem you don't know what you're saying? It's incredible. You see this? It's referring to us, not our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, a thousand years of reign of Christ. I thought it wasn't referring to Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ does not reign a thousand years. Jesus reigns forever. You can't dispute that. It's because they were not saved by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. They did not receive him. And they will be raised 1,000 years after us to face God's judgment. In Revelation 20, verse 11, verse 5, 15, whatever. So there you have it. Clear as day. I mean, shh, geez, whiz. Clear as, clear as day. Oh, is it Midnight. Look at the, look at this. They they will be raised. It's because they were not saved. They will be raised. One thousand years after us. Why? Why why would it be one thousand years after us? So they're all going to die when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And then they're going to die the second death? Or, no? They're all going to die when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You can't get around that. The day the Lord becomes a thief in the night. The day of the Lord. This is a day. The day of the Lord, that you can't get around that. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It, they have to die. <laughs> they have to die on that day. They can't survive that. Nope, you couldn't. Those guys, you couldn't, dis, you couldn't survive the flood in, in Noah's time. And that was just water. That was just water. You couldn't even swim and stay afloat. You couldn't grab a lifeboat or a, you know, a whatever. You couldn't survive water. How in the world are you going to survive fire? And when it, the earth and the elements and the works are all burned up, you're not going to survive that. So, therefore, logically speaking, everybody that is not saved has to die when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You can't get around it. Now your claim is, well, a thousand years later, they'll be resurrected and given the judgment of the second death. Why? Why would? Why wait a thousand years? It doesn't make any sense. But you don't want to say that, though. You don't want to. You don't want to think about it, and you don't want to say it because you're trying to be sneaky, and you're trying to push this fantasy. I already know. You're trying to push this and promote this fantasy 
of 1,000 years of romantic relations. That's what it's all about. I already know. The Bible even tells us. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own romantic relations fantasy. Huh? Same thing. They're fantasizing of romantic relations. Right? I mean, does that make it easier to understand if I say it that way? If I just say lust, is that okay? You understand that? Or what if I say dirty, stinky sex? Does that all of a sudden become easier or harder to understand? It's all the same thing. Romantic relations, dirty, stinky sex, same thing. That's what these guys are pushing. Knowing this second or third, or no, wait, no, it says knowing this first. And we get this also echoed in Jude 18. The same thing, the same thing. How that they told you in the last days there should be mockers, mockers, scoffers. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own romantic relations fantasies. Or their own thoughts of dirty, sinky sex. All right. Uh, it's the same thing. And then you push these guys. And they'll tell you. That they believe that there will be children born after we are resurrected. Alright, so follow this line of thinking here. He's saying that there won't be any unsaved people after Jesus comes for a thousand years and then they'll be judged and die the second death so there's going to be children being born during this thousand years and therefore that can only be saved people having sex so the children that are born from the saved people are they saved they have to be right no they can't be no they can't be because the resurrection of the saved people already happened there is no more resurrection of the same people saved people. So all the children that are born during this thousand years are unsaved. They will be resurrected but to eternal damnation. Well that that conflicts with what we read in 1 Corinthians 15 where it says after we are resurrected then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory. So there can't be any more death. So, for a thousand years after Jesus returns and we are resurrected, there is no more death, but yet we're having babies. But the babies can't be resurrected because the resurrection has passed already. And yet somehow, the unsaved are going to be resurrected, and then they're going to die the second death, even though death has already been swallowed up in victory. Well, then death isn't swallowed up in victory, because it's not until a thousand years after. So the only thing you got, the only argument you can make is that the Bible is a lie. Yeah, these people are absolutely insane. And they got no excuse, man. Uh, you don't got no excuse. All right. Now, if you're a new believer and you're trying to learn, yeah, okay, figure it out. These guys, they got no excuse. You got no excuse. You got no excuse at all. 
All right. Because you... Look at this. You've been doing this for a while. I don't even want to... Anyway. I don't even what the, I don't even care. I don't even care, man. Don't even care. These guys they have no excuse. Alright. And uh quite frankly, you don't have any excuse either. You got the scripture, you got the word of God, you got everything you could possibly ask for. The only requirement that is needed to understand is to believe what you read. Believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. That's it. Unfortunately, we live in a world where very, very few actually believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. And it's interesting because that's exactly what we're told would happen in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Where Jesus says, except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. If God allowed things to play out as they are, there would come a point to where nobody's saved. Why? Why is that? Is that is that because there's going to be an Antichrist coming and he's going to uh, turn us all into robots or rep, you know reptilians? You know. What is it? Huh? What, what, what do you think? Well, what if Jesus comes back today? Are you going to say no? Not every, the, he, the Antichrist hasn't come and, and he hasn't turned us all into reptilians. You can't come yet. Is that what you're going to tell him? I'd like to be there standing next to you when you explain to the Lord Jesus Christ why he can't come today. Would love to hear that conversation. Would love to hear your explanations and excuses for why he's come too soon. I really would. <laughs> I would love it, man. Love it. Luke chapter 18. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Does anybody believe the Bible that they hold in their hands? If you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, why don't you believe this? Huh? Why don't you believe this? Not all kindreds of the earth shall well when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You don't believe that. If you teach in a, an additional thousand years, there would be no reason for people to well. There would be no reason for the tribes of the earth to mourn. There would be no reason for men's hearts failing them for fear. Because, what, they're going to live for a thousand years? Or, they're going to die and then be resurrected a thousand years later? Then the Bible's a lie because death has not been brought to pass, or I'm sorry, um, death is not swallowed up in victory. All right. You're in a bad spot, man. How about this? How about just believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? Believe that it comes from God above. And not from man, but from God. Just as the Ten Commandments were written with the finger of God, so also is this Bible directly from God. Huh? Forever. O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. 